Seco Pump Maintenance Guide. Accessing the filter. Attention! Please always make sure the mains cable is unplugged before starting your work. Gaining access to the filter compartment of a Seco pump is a very simple process. Simply undo the single screw located centrally on the top cover and then pull up the cover. Once up, the filter compartment is visible. Pull out the filter and check the gaskets in the lid. It's a good idea to do this once every three to four months. The filter should be dry and the only dirt on it should therefore be dry dust. If there is any trace of a sticky residue, this is a sure sign of moist and foul air getting into the pump. This needs to be investigated quickly as foul air will corrode the internal electrics and will wreck your pump. Damage caused by foul or oily air or flooding isn't covered by the warranties, so it's best to fix the cause of the problem as fast as you can. If any signs of foul air are apparent, you would be well advised to extend the pipe work to enable you to relocate the pump. It's very important the pump can only breathe in clean, fresh air. Clean the inside of the filter cover, for example with a brush. A few tips here. Do you notice the inlet holes? If necessary, clean also this area with the brush. Accessing the core. To gain access to the core of the pump is also simple, but first, ensure the electricity supply is off as you are about to expose mains cables. Undo and remove the nuts and bolts in each corner of the casting, making sure you keep them safely to one side. If the case doesn't separate easily, and it might not, there is a slot designed in the housing specifically to assist you in opening the case. Just slide a flat bladed screwdriver into the slot and use it to help pry the top open. Make sure that the gasket will not be damaged. You should now be able to carefully lift the top casting away from the base, tipping it backwards so you don't pull on the cables too much. Lift off the ring of acoustic padding and set aside. Undo the four screws holding the cover to the core unit. You now have access to the drive unit. From here, we can now go on to service various internal parts of the pump. Component Overview before we move forward, it's probably a good idea to pause for a moment and just highlight the various parts which we can now see exposed within the unit. The drive unit, sit either side of a magnet, as sitting right above it, an auto stopper switch. The auto stopper switch activates if the pump becomes unbalanced. The most common cause of such an unbalance is if a diaphragm splits or gets exhausted. Each end of the magnet is bolted to the center of a diaphragm, and this diaphragm sits within a valve box. These magnets are really pretty strong, so make sure you don't catch your fingers and avoid wearing watches or get them close to anything that might be badly affected by a strong magnetic field. These two pipes take the air produced by the diaphragms down and out of the pump and ultimately down through your pipework to the place you need the air. One of the most common maintenance procedures you are likely to have to undertake is to replace a torn diaphragm. These discs operate very fast for thousands of hours a year and are naturally subject, eventually, to material fatigue. Disassembly To get to the diaphragms, we need to remove the valve boxes and take the diaphragms off the ends of the magnet, which actually moves them. Since the diaphragms of the smaller JDK series up to JDK80 center themselves, using spacers is not essential. We recommend using them anyway. You'll need four of them, two on each side. Please remove them only after reassembling the new parts. Starting one side, remove the four screws and washers retaining the valve box. Slacken the clip on the pipe
Now, loosen the screws from the valve box and place everything with the parts already removed. Pull off the valve box, exposing the diaphragm. Take a spanner of the correct size and undo the retaining nut from the center of the diaphragm. Slide the diaphragm off the magnet's threaded bolt. Open the repair or diaphragm's kit. Remove the new diaphragm from the service kit. Dispose of the exchanged diaphragms and attach the first new diaphragm onto the threaded end of the magnet. Make sure that it is aligned correctly. Note the opening here, which matches up with the same feature on the casting. Then repeat the other side. Remove the new valve boxes. The old valve boxes can now be discarded. Take a firm grip on the valve box and screw all four Phillips screws back in to fix the valve box in place. Then, reattach the pipe with its spring clip. Another tip here, slide the clip around so it points downwards. It may not seem a big thing, but it will keep the clip well away from the external casing. This will avoid it buzzing against the casing when the pump is completely reassembled and started back up. Repeat exactly the same procedure for the other end of the pump. In the further course of the airflow, or when connecting the peripheral devices, air hose, valve blocks, aerators, etc., it must be ensured that the sum of the resulting pressure losses due to cross-section reduction, opening pressure, and maximum water column at no time exceeds the permissible maximum back pressure of the compressor. The resulting damages cannot be claimed as warranty. Remove the spacers. It's useful to keep the spacers from the service kits for future repairs, as they aren't available separately. Reassembly. The final stage in any service is to put the pump back together again. Check it starts okay, and then put it back into your installation. Slide the magnet back into place between the two coils in the center of the core. Try to make sure the magnet is as central as possible. If you have the spacers, this will make your life quite a bit easier. But you still might need to use a flat-bladed screwdriver to gently coax the magnet to align centrally. 
you need to make sure the auto stopper switch is centralized. Actually, it might already be okay, but it's worth just checking. The switch can be pretty stiff, so if it doesn't centralize by finger pressure alone, you might want to ease it over with a flat-bladed screwdriver. If it's not centralized when you reinstate the power supply to the pump, it will not restart. Now, replace the internal core's top back down on the core casting with the imprint on the top side. Replace the acoustic padding and ensure the mains cable is reinserted into the top casing as shown here. Now lift the top casting back into place, ensuring you have not trapped any cables. Replacing the nuts, washers and bolts back in each corner of the casing. The filter can be washed in soapy water, but ensure it is bone dry. Maybe leave overnight in the airing cupboard before reinstalling it. It should really be replaced every 12 to 18 months. It's a good idea to maybe have one in stock as they are an inexpensive spare part. This is also valid for the gaskets in the lid. Remove the new gaskets from the service kit and place them in the pump cover. The old seals can now be discarded. Put the cover back on top of the housing and tighten the screw firmly. And you're done! Check the pump starts. If it doesn't, you'll need to take the power supply off. Go back a few steps to gain access to the auto stopper switch as it's quite likely to be the culprit if the pump doesn't restart. Maintenance instructions for Seco pumps powered by Bibus.